How did you do today, everybody? It's Thomas Brush. I make video games for a living. Let's jump into Unity today. It's going to be really, really fun because we're going to make snacks for our dog game. You're going to be able to create snacks. So we're going to add sound effects. We're going to add particle emissions when you collect the schmackos. So come on in. I can't wait to show you what we're working on today. Guys, let's go ahead and get started. And by the way, guys, I wanted to let you know that my brand new course, Easy 3D, is totally free right now. Click below to enroll for free, and you'll immediately be taken to the program where you're going to learn how to make your very first 3D game. And here's the best part. You're going to do it fast. And you really don't need to know anything about Unity or code or 3D modeling. It's really kind of easy, and it's totally free. Click below to make your very first 3D game. I can't wait to see you succeed. All right, let's not waste time here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump inside of um, we're gonna jump inside of our browser here, and we're gonna find a sound effect really quickly on Artlist.io. If you have an account here with the right license, you could find some pretty cool sounds. So we're gonna go ahead and work on something here that's been kind of bugging me, basically. Uh, let's see here. If I hit play here, I want to show you. We've been we've been making some progress here on the player movement. Um, one of the things with the player movement that we need to work on though is the the game feel with the bouncy pads. So these are these uh, these mushrooms right here. So you know, not the best. That's kind of weird right there. Why does it do that? So that's fine. Sometimes, if you're on the wrong edge, it's just not right. But also, when we slam down, I want a better sound effect, okay? So let's find a better sound effect for the actual slamming. Slamming on mushrooms versus just bouncing on them. I think it's pretty cool to give the player an advantage um, of uh, slamming down on mushrooms. Um, giving them more height, but also a fun sound. Okay, so let's get a Let's type in spring bounce maybe see what we get here Let's bounce <laughs> Let's bounce. Yeah, okay uh, No let's See what we get can find it uh I think I kind of like this one. Yeah, let's use that one. And we'll add a, uh, make it lower sounding, but let's also add a um, cork pop. That's kind of fun. Let's see if we can mix these two here. Okay, so we're gonna open up these up inside of Audacity here, and try and get a, a satisfying sound. That sounds about right. And then we're also gonna throw in that bottle pop sound, okay? All right. And by the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded my free 2D game kit below, be sure to check that out. If you're into making 2D games, you can use that to make a game however you want. You can make as much money off that game kit as you want. I really don't care. I use that game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days. So if you're interested, check that out below. Click the link below. No gimmicks. I'll send it to your email. That sounds great. Let's mix that. I like that. And then also, I, I kind of want a child to like say yay. Um, child yay. It's about rewarding the player. Um, <laughs> 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 
Yeah, let's get this yay. And then also confetti. And we're gonna we're gonna have confetti pop out of the um, the mushroom. We're gonna have children screaming and laughing when you come uh, launch off the mushroom. It's like the dumbest thing ever, but it's fun. And then confetti. This is what happens, guys, when you make a, a horror game for a year. I like that. Let's grab that too. You end up making really childish stuff because it's depressing. So the last game I was working on, by the way, if you, those of you don't know, was a horror game. Um, so we're taking a little bit of a break. Let's lower that down. I want it to just be a regular voice. All right, and then one more confetti sound, guys. Okay, and oh, <laughs> it's gonna be such a dumb game. Uh, here we go. Well, let's see here, one sec. There we go, just some confetti here. That's about it. So let's see if we can get all these sound effects working. Okay, we'll bring them all into one. Actually, I'm gonna mix and render all of them down. No, that's not right, hold on. There we go. So you want it between negative 12 and negative six. The confetti's a little too loud. So, where is it? Is it this one? No, it's this one. All right, export that out as a wave file. And let's see here. Fireworks whistle. What do you think of Hector? Welcome Hector, by the way. Hector, how you doing, buddy? Fireworks whistle. What are you thinking here? <whistles> Fireworks would be really cool. I'm gonna work out, do this just for now. Um, bounce big. Uh, I'm gonna do bounce yay. Okay. Export that out, click OK. Then we're gonna jump inside of our bouncer script here, and we're actually gonna add a two things here. Um, the first one is gonna be, uh, let's see here. Hmm, I think we're gonna have two animations actually uh, for the bouncer. We're gonna have a regular bounce, but we're also going to have a big bounce, okay? Animation, mushroom bouncer. This is going to be called regular bounce. And we're going to be adding schmackos in a little bit, guys. Uh, but I wanted to get this bounce pad um, working for us. So that's a big bounce here. We're going to copy over the bounce here. We're going to go to big bounce, paste it. This one, I don't feel like I need to do any different animation here, but what I do want to do is have some different particles emitting. Um, for now, I'm just gonna have the sound. We're gonna go play sound, and this is gonna be the yay sound. Okay, so that's gonna play with the animation event. Um, that's just a script I wrote for all my animation events. Okay. All right. Now, also, let's go ahead and we're gonna actually do a particle emission um, of 10, but we're also gonna do a particle emission, a second particle emission. Um, let's see here. If we go to our bounce here, we have three. What, we have play sound, emit particles one, and em emit particles two. So we're gonna emit particles two as well. Okay, but I think I wanna have emit particles three, so let's write that script, okay? Uh, particles three can be the confetti. Um, and by the way, it's really important that you guys have scripts that you can use over and over and over again. So that's why I have this big script full of all these cool functions um, to um, have all sorts of cool effects on any animation. 
something I really like to do here. So let's go to particle system. Let's create a new variable here called particle system three. Okay. And then when we go to our actual animator function script that's attached to this object, we can add a new particle um, system. I'm going to go ahead and just add this one though for now. Um, and let's see here, that's bouncer regular. So we're going to do a big bounce here and it's going to be right here. Okay. Um, emit particles three. Part of me feels like we should actually do it differently here. I'm not going to do the, the, the confetti just yet. Let's make sure that we're just, we're, everything's working properly. Um, so let's go to our bouncer. And what we're going to do is we have this, if player is pounding, then um, do certain things, right? Uh, so what I want to do here is um, we're going to get rid of this. Bounce power. Um, yeah, all we got to do here is actually this right here, bounce power, good, okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have an if statement inside of this bounce script, and it's basically say if the player is bouncing or if they're pounding, then we're going to do a much bigger effect, right? Um, we're also going to have this bounce power equal 0.6. Um, yep, you're good. Okay, so this bounce power is 0.6. How about let's do bounce power multiplier. Uh, basically, what this is going to allow us to do is multiply times this multiplier here. Uh, so that the bounce is smaller if they're not pounding, okay? So bounce power multiplier is going to equal 1 if we're actually... Um, uh, actually, what we can do here... There we go. There we go. That's what we're, what we're going to do here. Um, we're just going to have it here. It's a float. Float bounce power multiplier equals 1 by default. But if we're pounding or if we're not pounding, we want it to be 0.6, okay? And then we just multiply it by the actual pounds power. That's going to ensure that if we're not pounding, it's going to be a little less of a bounce. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to actually have the animation play proper. Okay, else. So if this is the the regular bounce. This is the big bounce. Mushroom bounce bouncer. Uh, let's see what the name is. Big bounce. Okay, and hopefully, hopefully. We'll get a different effect. Okay, so let's try this out, guys. All right. Let's see here. Save it out. Hit play. And just see what we get here. Good. <laughs> All right, we're close close um, all right big bounce needs to go back to its idle position um, the other one has an exit time and also transition good so one exit time of one transition of 0.3 and it's going to automatically go back we're also going to make sure that loop time is turned off so that it doesn't loop okay um, so that's pretty good the only problem I have here is the sometimes that works great right there. Sometimes it doesn't, though. All right. So the next thing I want to do here is one well, final tweak here for the actual mushroom bouncer. Now, I understand that we've got some problems, guys, with the... Um, sometimes, for some reason, it doesn't bounce. And I've been working on it for couple hours and I just can't figure out why but we're also going to go to play sound and then just do a regular bounce as well so we want two sounds to happen mushroom bounce and also the yay sound and sort of get a combination of all of them okay so that's about all we want to do here I'm gonna go ahead and apply this prefab so that we can push it to github and it should be something we can use across the board see that I don't know why that happens. Look at that. Good. I'm going to add confetti coming out of his body. <laughs> I 
That's really fun. I'm a big fan of just really good game feel. Great platforming. But we have a problem here. Look at that. For some reason, I figured it out. Now I know. Dang it. Okay, I know what the problem is. It's the collider. Basically, the collider is coming up too much and it's actually interfering with the player and causing the player to get sucked back down into it. This should be a graphic. It should not actually be changing, which really sucks. Um, because, so let's see here. Son of a bee. Okay, I think we can get this to work actually. So what we wanna do is we wanna create an empty uh, child um, and then bring the mushroom bounce into it. This is gonna be the graphic. So that's mushroom bounce graphic. This is just mushroom bounce, okay? So what this means is we have all of this stuff. I'm gonna put this box collider on there, paste that on there. Man, I hate when this happens, but we, we need to do it. Um, so we have a box collider on there. Let's take a look and make sure it's right. Yep, looks good. We're also gonna have um, mesh renders fine there. Audio source is fine there. The bouncer script itself is gonna be here, okay? And honestly, that should do it. I, I think that should actually fix our problem. Do you, do you guys see what was going on there? Basically, if you've got something animating, um, especially a collider, that collider is gonna animate and it's gonna push into the player and cause some weird glitches. Um, that's the theory, at least. We'll, we'll see if that's actually what's happening here. So let's go ahead and hit play here. Um, and make sure that this is actually. So, yeah. <coughs> what? Why? Okay, so. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I think I may know what's going on here. Pull you out, let's hit play again. Okay, that's right. So the mushroom bounce needs to be pretty much, um, it needs to be zeroed out and then set to one, one, one. That's what's going on here. Uh, that's the theory, at least let's take a look here. Now hit play again. Good, all right, so that, that should do it. So let's hit play here and take a look. The collider is all screwy now. So what you could do here, guys, whenever your collider size is kind of screwed up, you can always add a box collider and see what its size is. But oftentimes, when you've got a graphic inside of an empty game object, um, you want to add the box collider to the game object first, see? And then copy it and remove it. And all of its sizes are going to be set properly. Paste component as new. So son of a We're gonna just do it manually. <laughs> that usually works, but not in this case. Two by two by two, zero it out. Um, man, frustrating, really, really frustrating. Let's go to top view here, and then just draw it out really quick. I hate doing this manually like this. It really bugs me, because my goal is always get things done fast, and uh, Okay, that looks great. Let's hit play and take a look. Oh, it works perfectly. Game feel is your best friend, especially as an indie, because it's really, it's cheap to make. It requires a bit of knowledge about how to make something look good. Um, but overall guys that works great so i'm going to go ahead basically select the the prefab we we're working on um this is going to be called mushroom bounce graphic unfortunately we're going to need to keep, actually no, no 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 here's what we're going to do we're going to unpack this okay unpack the prefab um 
let's see, select red mushroom. Okay, so we're gonna call this red mushroom. So that's the actual, not like that. <laughs> Uh, that's the actual blend file. So now I can actually delete this one. I don't believe it's being used, but we'll we'll double check. Find. Uh, let's let's create a different one. Um, let's just add it here just in case. Okay. And the theory is, it looks really good isometric. Look at that. The theory is, if I delete those, those are the old ones. Um, it really looks good isometric. I hate when that happens. Like, should I do isometric? Um, look at that. Looks great. Uh, so what we can do here is, um, we should be able to delete this one. Let's find references in scene. We've got none, so let's delete it. There we go. Now let's hit play. Take a look. Awesome. All right, so mushrooms work great. Select. I'm just gonna put a couple all over the place just to, this is sort of our playground level where we just sort of goof off and have fun. Um, so overall though, the mushrooms are, are looking great. I think what I wanna do now is I wanna get schmackos, right? We can do confetti later. There's certain levels of polish where you just say, you know what, I don't wanna polish today. That's a little too much. You sort of have to, I'm still learning this. You have to learn how to stop yourself from polishing too much. Just finding the right balance. Okay, so schmackos. Um, the first thing I wanna do with the schmackos is I want uh, four smacking sounds on my lips. So let's go to Audacity here and do that really quick. <coughs> 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 Okay, there's three, we need to do one more. Three's fine. <coughs> okay, tracks, mix and render. Uh, actually, we go, let's do um, mix down to mono. There we go. And we're gonna increase the pitch <coughs> by 7%. All right, and what we want to do is we want to get some sort of uh, crunch sound, not crunch, crunch. And let's take a look and see what we got here. That's a chip. <clears throat> We're looking for a very generic crunch sound. Kind of like that one. So we're gonna mix that together. Um, so how about we copy that and then just go into our smacking of lip sounds. Good. Drax, we might need to lower the bass or do some sort of um, high pass filter here because it's a little bassy. So we can do that really quick. But this right here, let's take a look. Pull this one here and take a look how they sound. Sometimes it's good to offset your sounds. <clears throat> All 
I like that one. That one's great. Okay, let's let's uh, add a little high pass filter here, guys. A high pass filter is going to allow high frequency sounds to pass, right? Uh, that's basically it. So you want to go with a, I think a fairly low number here, something like eight thousand maybe. No, higher numbers are better. So seventeen thousand. No, what about one thousand, two thousand. Yeah, one thousand. Good. This feels like it should be a little bit over there. And then up here, what I want to do is There we go. So let's add those towards the end here. See what I mean, guys? And then this we could probably cut. No, maybe we add some sound here. Here we go. Good. Okay. So we're almost done with our schmacko sounds. But one thing that you can do when you're working with sound effects in more playful games is add some gamey rewarding sounds. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see if we can merge all of these together. Um, down to, uh, we're actually going to mix and render. There we go. Good. Okay. Can you guys hear that? Okay. Sorry. I, I didn't look. All right. Awesome. So we've got some great sound effects. And by the way, guys, if you haven't checked out that free 3D course below, totally free 3D course. Um, it's going to show you how to make a 3D game without really knowing anything about 3D. Uh, so it's really a, a course for anybody to get started and learn how to make a 3D game very fast. Um, totally free down below. No gimmicks or anything. You just click below in your email and then take the course. Um, you're going to learn everything I, I learned when I first started making 3D games um, and what I kind of wish I knew because it was a little bit weird going from 2D to 3D. Um, so you can check that out below. All righty, guys. Let's take a look here. Um, game sounds. We could even do, yeah, we could do game sounds until we get here. Hey, Gordon, how you doing, buddy? I love these sounds. Let's take a look at this sound pack from Unreal SFX. What I'm going to do, to be safe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have separate sounds. And by the way, these are a little too loud. There we go. So I'm going to actually uh, fade this out, export the selected audio, and we're going to say dog eat one. Okay. So we're going to have his vocals, and then we're also going to have fade I think what we want to do is fade that out um, we're gonna have his vocals and then we're also gonna have an actual collection sound so we'll see how they they, they sound together okay dog eat number two good and then dog eat number three export selected sound dog eat three now what we need to do is go to our actual collectible. In this case, it's called a pickup. The script is called a pickup. Uh, there's no sound that's being played from this um, because there's actually a sound that is called collect sound, I believe. Let's see here, audio source is audio. Coin sound, it's called coin sound. I think what I want this to be called is food eat sound. Just a very generic food collection sound. Um, so there should be an error here in just a sec. Let's actually go to Unity here and take a look. There's going to be a few errors here. They should show up. 
Hmm. Ah, yes, here we go. Okay, it's down here. So we're gonna play the foodie sound from the actual player himself, but we're also gonna play it from a pickup source, okay? I think I might wanna change this. Um, you know what? Here's what we can do. As long as the player has an audio source that is public, we can just play the sound through, the, through, through that. Yeah, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we have the pickup. So we're gonna do public, uh, audio clip, pick up sounds. It's gonna be an array. And then we're gonna have a public void play sounds. Honestly, we could do, uh, we could have a, it's not really a pickup script, public void play sounds and that will play the sounds from the pickup here now the way that I want to do this is we want to go game man I'm not gonna do it this way yeah I'm not gonna do it this way here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the player here and collect food it really shouldn't be called collect food um, oh crap collectibles like I, I, I did this wrong shoot Let's go to update food list here. Yeah, this is a mess. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna just make eat sounds for now. Um, and we're gonna do random dot range zero to food eat, uh, player dot food eat sounds. Uh, dot length. What that's going to do is it's going to play a random sound. There we go. Wait, what? Why is this happening? What's the problem here? Ah, uh, yes, it doesn't exist, that's why, Thomas. And then let's go back to our values here. And this is our eat sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there we go. So the, the eat sounds are gonna be stored inside of the player, not the actual pickup, um, which isn't really ideal, to be completely honest. I feel like I wanna change that. Um, man, what do I wanna do here, guys? Let's, let's think this through. I don't want to get too uh, too picky here. Having it all stored in one spot might be a good idea. Um, you know, I mean, we'll try it out. We'll see. We can remove this. We'll try it out and see how it feels. Um, having them all stored here might be a good idea. So let's go back to Unity here and take a look. Go to Playa here. Go all the way up. We, we need that, that foodie it sounds. Sounds there. We, there we go, plural. Um, and then hopefully we can get this to work here. Foodie sounds dot length. And now we can go ahead and just put these in there. Something's going on here. What? There it is, Thomas, come on, man. Sorry, my brain is uh, feeling a little slow today. And now, if we go to our player here, there he is. If we go to our player here, we can actually add in those sounds. So, food eat sounds, we're gonna do four, and we're gonna type eat, We've got doggy one, two, and three. Let's try it out. Good. 
I kind of like it. And I'm going to actually have the sounds. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I think that's fine. I feel like if you have it a little bit more random, so something like one more sound, it won't be so repetitive. Export that one out, and then we should be good to go, guys. Um, I think that's fine. The next thing we want to do is create some particles, okay? When you eat something, you want to get some particles to appear from the dog's mouth. But let's make sure everything feels good here. I love that. Okay. I feel like it should stop the sound. I don't mind. Okay, guys, that was fun. Next thing I want to do is create a particle system. Uh, it's going to be called like food particles, and it's going to be on the player controller. This is why I love making more simplistic games, because you can have a ton of different particle systems that all do different things, and they just emit from the player. Um, so we have these star particles here. These are for pounding, so these actually occur when you pound. So we can do something like this. Um, if, I mean, if we hit 25 here, something like that when you collect food. Or even better, we could do something like this, which is the pound, uh, or you know, the, the jump particles. Let me paste those in. We're going to call these eat particles. Eat particles. So what we can do here is we actually have a mesh, and this mesh is like that, right? But what we can do is we can make them smaller, two by three. We can have them emit longer, like that. Uh, we can make the shape or the speed, we can make the speed a little bit more intense. Um, so something like four by five, four by 10 maybe. Five by ten, yep. Give it a bit of more gravity. Point uh, six, yep. I think the size a little bit too big, so one by two maybe. Yeah. So that looks more like a Captain Crunch is exploding out of our little pug here. That's what we want. And then what we can do. This is the theory at least. The theory is what you do is you swap out the texture, or in this case the um, the meat. You swap it out. I'm going to copy this. And, and I'm going to paste it on the actual eat particles. Um, let's see here. Actually, let's just find out what it's called. Pick up, huh? No, that's not right. It's a material mountain? No. Why is it called material mountain? It's probably just a, uh, we're going to call this <laughs> material meat. Um, and then we're going to go to our eat particles here. If we put our material meat here, that's what it looks like when you eat the meat. Okay. What if we eat, let's double check something here. What if we eat this cake? Okay. Um, there's our cake. So the theory is material food one, if we put that cake on there, Yeah, it's not the greatest. I think what I want to do is just be able to change the color. But I don't want to do that. I want it to be fast. Let's see here. What are we going to do here, guys? Let's swap it back. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it. We could probably set the t no. Hmm. What do you guys think we should do here? How's that look? 
Ugh, it's fine, I guess. What about this friend here? So the beef. That's material food one, isn't it? It's still the same one. Okay. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I think... Um, let's hit play. I, I, I gotta... Sometimes I just have to sit around and play to think about it. I think a vanilla color is probably the best bet, um, which is, I mean, honestly, ugh, what am I doing here? Stars? You think we should do stars? Hmm. No. I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to make a particle. really think it needs a particle. What are we going to do, guys? What are we going to do? Maybe blue? Like spit? Yeah, maybe spit. It may be spit. Maybe that's a good idea. Let's try that. Uh, backwards? Yeah, let's try spit. So what we're going to do is we're going to yeah, spit might be a good idea that you always want. You want to save time guys. And sometimes it's best to just choose a generic color, right? So in my case, I'm going to do this bluish color for spit. Let's try that. Renderer. Where, where did it go? It was just there. Is that it? S S what? I'm really confused. Spit particle. I am confused about what's going on. There it is. Doesn't look great. Let's figure it out here. There we go. So it'll look like drops, right? Okay, so we have eat particles. Uh, let's double check something here, make sure all of our particles are correct. All of our all of our particles look good. Yeah, I think that I think that spit particle is gonna look great. Um, so there's our eat particles. Let's set the emission rate to zero. Then, you know, big old list of particles here. Um, we have all these different particles. So why not add one more? This is gonna be eat particles. Then when you eat something, you emit those particles. Okay. Um, so it's right here, collect food, update food list is here. So let's do player dot eat particles dot emit. Uh, we'll do something like six. Okay. Now we got to make sure we define it, right? So drag it over into the inspector. And by the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, feel free to check that out. It's my treat to you. Use it however you want. You can use it to make a game like I did in 14 days. I made a game for PewDiePie in 14 days with that game kit. So if you're interested in using that, it's my treat to you. Just like these cupcakes and chicken wings are a treat to our little doggy here. So be sure to check that out. If 2D is not something you're interested, I got a 3D course below. It's totally free, 3D course, on how you can make a 3D game knowing nothing about 3D. Okay, here's our eat particles. Drag it on in. 
Yes. And then hit play. Good. So we just need to put that particle, uh, eat particles next to his face. So it's like right here. I would even argue putting it uh, much closer to his mouth is probably ideal. Let's take a look. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. I like that. It's pretty fun. Adding a little bit of brown to his E particles might actually be a good idea. So we're going to call these E particles brown, and we're just going to see if we can add a brown um, particle to this, OK? So here's what we're going to do. Let's go to our spit particles here, and we're just going to create, we're going to add the uh, step dust to it. And the theory is it'll look more like white. So it's like, I don't know, like breadcrumbs or something. Uh, that should be a sub emitter, OK? So turn on sub emitters, pull that in here. And the theory is, it's always the theory here, <laughs> 25, yeah, yeah. Okay, so eat particles, we're gonna set this to zero. How about one, two, three, two. Good. Um, okay, let's take a look here. So we'll set that to zero. I don't know, man, let's take a look. Yeah, I'm using the AOC, it's like a 27 inch monitor. Or, yeah. Okay, that feels pretty good. Guys, let's talk really quick. What else, uh, something's missing. So when I eat something, something's missing. It needs to be like a spark. And also, that's weird. Something's going on with these eat particles here. Something's going on, guys. Let's take a look. Look at that. Hmm. Turn off collision. Uh, random burps. <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, here we go. Oh. That was good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, let's see here. First, I want to figure out what's wrong with these particles. Um, that was great. Something's wrong with these particles. Uh. I'm not sure what it is. Let's take a look here. Add those burp sounds. We'll do a higher pitch. OK. 
Okay. Tracks, mix and render to mono. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Export selected audio. Uh, dog burp. Um, I think it needs to be negative 12 and negative 6. Let's double check something here. Uh. There we go. Uh. Export selected audio. Doc. Um, burp one and then burp two yeah we'll, we'll we'll definitely start like we'll have a huge delay before starting the the sound dog burp two Okay, three is fine. Um, now let's double check something here. Play, can you, let's see here. Can you do a delay, a delay when playing a sound without scripting it? Uh, but obviously you can do a I enumerator. Play delayed. Huh. Yeah, okay. So we, do, we just need to use an I enumerator, um, which is fine. Um, what we'll do is create a script inside of the player uh, so that we can just use it whenever we want. Um, play one shot delayed there we go so we have our clip we have our delay i hate using underscore <laughs> and then we're going to do audio source dot play one shot clip that's about it that's all we got to do so let's go back to our pickup okay uh, i'm sorry our it's it's this is an issue that i have with my the multiplayer is there's there's multiplayer and it's the way the sounds are handled is a little different. And so I need to, I'm probably gonna retrofit the game to be single player just for now. And we'll worry about multiplayer later. Um, but anyway, let's let's do this. Player, um, well, we'll start coroutine. And then it's player dot, uh, play one, play delayed. What is it called? <laughs> the public, let's make it public. Play one shot delayed. There we go. Um, and then it's going to take the clip. So it's a uh, player burp sounds. Okay. And I actually want it to, we're going to have like six random values, um, even though there's only three burp sounds. <sighs> because sometimes we don't want them to burp, right? So let's go to our, where are we? There we go. Burp sounds. It's gonna be brilliant. I really like the idea of having a burp. Uh, burp sounds at length. Uh, food sounds, and then also comma the delay. Um, so I'm thinking one, two, two seconds, two second delay. Uh, that's good. That should do it. Um, so let's go ahead and add our burp sounds, guys. That should pretty much do it. But you know, if you add like six or seven slots available uh, for the burp sounds, sometimes it won't even choose a sound. So let me show you. So if I do like eight here, and then I go to dog burp one, apparently I only have two values for burping. Um, so we set it to four. Let's actually grab one more. Let's do it. There we go. That's a great one. Mix and render. Tracks mixed down to mono. Fade out. Export selected audio. 
dog burp three and then just drag that in there we go that should do it let's take a look Good. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to have the ability to play a certain volume because that's a little quiet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to this right here, play one shot delayed, and then we're going to say uh, float volume, and it's going to be one by default, um, and then we're going to type volume here. But in this case, we can go here to our um, syncing of properties. Yep, yep, yep. Play one shot delayed, two second delay, that's a little long. And then, so we're gonna do one second. Honestly, maybe even 0.6 seconds. And then we're gonna do two. Two is the volume. Uh, that should be good. So let's take a look here. I don't know why it's every time it plays something. We should probably set it, yeah, oh, that's why. We need to set it to eight so that, guys, what does that mean? It means that 50% of the time, he's gonna burp, that's what it means. In this case, actually, it's um, like 40% uh, or something, What's whatever that is. Three, to seven, uh, three divided by seven. What? What's happening? There we go. Good. Okay, I really like it. I think I think there needs to be something else that when you eat something, should his body like bloop, what should it do? Like a, a little fluffy, like a little fluff effect, like I don't know. Um vibrate, squish like this. Let's keep playing poop a little. I mean, we, dude, Gordon, we've got a poop mechanic that we're 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 thinking about. Uh. Something in the UI. We still got to get the health system working, so we'll do that. What is it? What is it missing? It's missing something. What is it? <sighs> it's missing something. I don't know what it is. Screen flash? It might be the screen flash. You might be right. Let's hit play again, double check. Let's uh, take a look and see what Magic Hat does. Right? Oh, when in doubt. When in doubt. What does the Magic Hat do? What's that game called? Why, did, why can't I find it? What's it called? Magic Hat? Indie game? Ah 
hat in time, not magic hat. All right, let's take a look here. Stars? Oh, okay, I already figured it out. Thank you, Magic Hat or Hat in Time. Here's what we need to do. Create a new file. It's going to be like uh, 300 by 300. And we'll use this for the... Uh, um, I believe we'll use it for coins, um, but I think we can also do it for health. I mean, let's double check though. This game is so great. Cool. So plenty of cool effects here. Yeah, we might be able to just, uh, ooh, okay. That's it. All right. I love that. And a little heart spun above the head. That was cool too. So what we could do is we can do a, a like a circular effect. So we've already got it actually um, in the jump. Uh, where, where am I? Yeah, in the pound shock wave. So let me show you. Um, we can do this one here, set it to 25. See that? Set it to white and actually have it face the camera, right? So let's go to the renderer. And uh, it would be billboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you collect health, sorry guys, I'm really, one sec. Um, so we set it to billboard and it'll just shock forward uh, when you collect something. That's basically it, okay? So set it to 10. That might work. Let's zoom out. And then we'll do, we don't want it to scale that much. Um, something like this. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to set the shape um, zero. So it's always the same spot. Okay. So this is like going to be just round circle particles. Uh, yeah. And we'll set it to zero. And now let's double check something here. Let's go to the player himself. Again, plenty of particles here. Um, these are round circle particles. I'm just going to specify these are used for health collection, among other things. So it's really just a, a sort of signal. Um, so let's let's go ahead and uh, go to our health collection. Yeah, right here. And we're going to go to our eat particles. We're also going to go to health or round circle particles and then we're going to emit, emit three that should do it um, so let's drag those into the inspector here we go We're almost there. I, I think it needs to be emitting from the player. Okay. So what we need to do is let's go to our round circle particles. We're gonna set these the simulation space to local. Okay. That way it's coming out of the belly of the dog. Okay, set it to much faster. 0 0.2, 0.2. Yep, there we go. Copy that, paste component values, and then we're gonna do something very subtle, right? 
And then we're also going to set the emission to four. And the size is going to be random as well. Okay. So start size is going to be random between two constants. Uh, we could do two and six. And then hit play. Yeah, making the dog flash is definitely ideal. Do you see how like that helps so much though? Just that subtle. Okay, very good. The next thing I wanna to do today on my list is I, I kinda of wanna figure out how to get the, the, the dog to, uh, let's see here. What did I have on my list so I don't overwhelm myself here? Food collection particles, generic food collection sounds, awesome bounce salad for large bounce. Then roll dash. Do I really want to work on roll dash right now? I don't think I do. It would be fun though. Yeah. But what we wanted to do, I might actually just do this. I, I don't know. What we want to do is we want to make it so that the, the dog can pick up this bone and he can throw things with his mouth. So we, we talked about that today, me and Felipe. Um, so let's let's at least show you what that's gonna look like. Um, and then maybe consider doing it. I don't know if I wanna work on rolling right now. So, so it'd be something, it's so funny looking. It's great. I mean, is that not the greatest thing ever? It's so adorable. So, I mean, my goodness, right? Uh, so I think, uh, <laughs> I think we, I think I want to work on that right now. So here's what we're going to do. The rotation is set to 259. What if I set it to zero? Okay. Negative 90. Uh, zero. Zero out the position. Okay, so what we need to do is basically set the rotation to any object to zero, negative 90, and zero. Look at that. I'm sorry, it's just so fun, okay. So zero, zero, okay, negative 90, good. So this bone, um, it's gonna be, a it's gonna have a box collider on it. It's not gonna have a rotator script because this is a pick upable object, okay? This is about the only pick upable object, we'll, we'll do sticks and stuff, but this one right now is the only one we're gonna work on for the demo. Um, so the box collider itself, good. Let's add a rigid body to it. Good. And at the very least, let's just take a look at what it looks like. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's great. Um, we're going to set it to point 0.1. And we're going to write a script. Okay. Guys, I don't think this is going to be that hard. Knock on wood for me, all of you, because I'm thinking all I got to do is set it to snap into position um, at the root. And the theory is at root, I can actually add a value here inside the body, actually. We call this mouth, mouth pivot. Zero that position out. Honestly, we could set it to negative, uh, well, yeah, we could probably set that at negative 180. And then go to the mouth here and just put it right there. And all you got to do is if the dog touches that bone, he's going to collect it. That's it. So 0.01. Nope, nope, nope. 
0 0.0109, there we go. And then that should be good. And then this, uh, good right there. Okay, so that's the mouth pivot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new uh, reference to that pivot point. Um, and we'll do a big cleanup of these variables later. This is a transform as a game object. It's going to be mouth pivot. Okay. What? Uh, mouth pivot. Good. And then we're going to create a new script here. And we're going to call it throwable. Throwable. Okay. Really, I mean, it's as simple as void public. Actually, uh, void on collision enter. Um, if collision dot get component, uh, uh, game object dot get compo uh, Wait, what am I doing here? If collision dot game object equals um, player dot instance dot game object, then collect me, right? So what that would mean is that would mean my transform dot parent equals player dot instance dot, what was it called? Mouth pivot. Um, we're gonna play a sound, right? So we're gonna say player dot instance dot audio source dot play one shot um, pick up throwable sound okay and then finally obviously we don't have that available yet so we need to make sure we put that in the player script here all next to the audio sources public audio clip. And by the way, those of you just joining us, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, feel free to check that out. It's totally free. I use this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days. Okay. So be sure to check that out below. And if 2D is not your thing, check out the 3D course, totally free 3D course on how to make a 3D game with no knowledge of 3D modeling. Um, Mouthpivot.transform. There we go. Uh, also, we need to make sure we're specifying what my rigid body is. This is going to be a public uh, rigid body, new rigid body. Um, and then also a box collider as well. So we need to get component for both of those. Um, yeah, I'm fine with doing that. So let's call this RB actually. So we're going to do RB equals get component, right? Rigid body. And then, boop, that's about it. And the same is true for down here, box collider, get the components for the box collider. That way, before we even do anything with the transform variables, we say RB dot is kinematic equals true. And then we say um, box collider dot is trigger uh, equals tr true. Um, so pick up throwable sound. Is that not for some reason public pick up throwable sound? Why? Ah, that's why. Player.instance. So we're gonna get a pickup. And then the, the, the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna set that the rotation, um, the, the transform points as well. So we're gonna say transform.localPosition equals vector 3.0. And the transform.rotation is gonna equal quaternion Identity. Isn't that correct, guys? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong here. I believe it should be uh, Quaternion Identity. Hey, Happy Splash, how are you? So that's the theory, guys. Um, let's take a look here. So one of the problems, I think, is I need to open this bone up in Blender, and I want its position to be zero. I know for certain that this is going to be a problem. So let's open up bone in Blender. <sighs> sucks 
Hmm. Let's test it out here. Let's add the script. And by the way, let's make it a trigger. Uh, no, 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 let's not make it a trigger. Let's do this. Let's add a box collect. No, 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 I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Let's just try that for now and let's go ahead and add that script. We might need to add a trigger though, just in case the player, you know, wants to be able to get the bone a little bit easier. But anyway, let's hit play here. I'm doing great, Happy Splash. I'm having a really good time today. I'm enjoying working on a little bit more of a playful game. It's been really, really fun. Super, super fun. Okay, no reference exception, unassigned reference, which means it's probably mouth pivot. Yep, player controller, let's go to mouth pivot. So let's look for an empty game object. There it is. And it is right here. Pick up sound as well. We're just gonna choose the dog jump sound for now. We'll, we'll, we'll specify a better one. But let's take a look here. What? <laughs> Where's the dang bone? It's somewhere. Oh, it's scale is zero. Why did it scale get set to zero? What happened? Uh, what? Guys, why did it scale get set to zero? That's weird. That's really weird. Um, if I pull it down like this and do it this way, what happens? It scale gets set to zero. It's because mouth pivot is set to zero. That's why. One, one, one. There we go. Hit play. Danny beat me to it. Screw you, Danny. Where's the dog? Wait, wait, wait. Where's the bone? Where'd the bone go? Where's the bone? I'm confused. It's right there. So the bone is set to zero, zero, zero. There we go. Um, let's double check. Okay, there it is. There's our bone. Um, and his mouth is, we gotta go back to his mouth and set it to one, one, one. Um, the rotation I know for certain isn't gonna work properly. I'm confused. Oh my, we went way back in time. Throwable, add throwable, good. But we, all those references we already did, we gotta do it again. Man, Thomas. Um, so let's see here. Pick up throwable sound, we're gonna do, just do a burp for now. Mouth pivot, we're gonna add that pivot. And we should be good to go. There it is. Yay. Awesome. All right. Honestly, I think the next step is pressing the mouse and it just launches it really fast. Um. Okay. So the next step is to on click. Um, so here's what we'll do. We'll say, um, uh, picked up equals true. So if picked up equals true, then we can do whatever we want with it. Okay. Well, obviously, guys, we want that to be a Boolean. It's not going to be public. It's really a read-only, or it's a 
right only. Uh, it's just birds. It's just George says Thomas. What shade are you using? We're using Tuni Colors Pro Two. We're using it across the board. Okay, it's the hybrid shader in the Tuni Colors Pro, and we're also enabling mobile. So if you see, I if you see any weird idiosyncrasies with the the shader, it's because it's mobile, and I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a fast game with weird idiosyncrasies than a slow game. If picked up, if input dot get button down and it's going to be key but thomas but thomas what about console i'll have a porting studio deal with that we're just going to do this what why get mouse button down key dot mouse zero good why confused okay we'll do a little search here trying to figure out what's going on let's see here get mouse button down unity input dot get mouse button down Oh, all you gotta do is just to, okay. Sorry. Um, so all we gotta do here, my friends, is it's just zero. Apparently that's all you gotta do. If get mouse button down zero, then throw. Man, this is gonna be so easy. Private. Um, wait, what? Uh, honestly, let's just do public void throw and we're going to do rb dot add force uh, transform dot forward uh, times throw power and it really should be a global value although yeah it, it should be global player dot instance dot throw power um, that's not a variable so we'll come up with that really quick but you want to make sure guys uh, transform dot parent equals null you also want to make sure that the rigid body is no longer kinematic rb dot is kinematic equals false and then also remember uh, box collider dot is trigger equals false and um, let's go ahead and add this here throw power is going to be well let's put it next to like the jump power public float throw power equals 100 um, I would much rather set the the force. So rigid body dot velocity equals transform dot forward. I'd rather it be that than adding force because I want it to be constant at all times. So I could be wrong here, but let's double check this. Um, <clears throat> and we'll also play a throw sound. We'll say player dot instance dot audio source, play one shot, throw sound. We'll do 1.5. I'm pretty sure I know that that's gonna be the value we need. Uh, Player.instance.throw sound. We'll add that in there as well. Stop. We'll just put it right over here. Uh, pick up throwable, and then throw sound. And there's not gonna be any sound effects that come out of an object. Uh, when it hits the ground or anything. Nothing like that. I'm not in the mood to program any of that. And then obviously, guys, picked up equals false. Right? Uh, it's health. I would say on collision, enter, else if it's the ground or anything else, honestly. And the else if... If the velocity itself, which you know would be rigidbody dot velocity dot magnitude, if it's greater than something like uh, ten, then health minus equals one, and then also the cooldown period. Um, cooldown. 
Well, let's see here. Hurt cooldown. Well, well, let's worry about that later. Sorry, I get carried away. So that should that should be good. Um, so let's go to our like our shoot sound. Let's add a shoot sound really quick. Um, so you can see here. There we go. Throw sound. We're gonna just do jump. And eat. Uh, roll. Uh, pick up the pickup sound. I couldn't really hear. So let's double check. Don't forget pick equals wall. Uh, equals walls. Yeah. Why is the rotation screwy? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so I know I figured out what's wrong here. It's gonna be rigid body velocity. It's not the throwable. It's the uh, player dot instance dot dog animator dot transform dot forward. That's really the value. Uh, is it? I don't think that's the right value. It should be the camera. Um, I think I got it. I think I got it. Camera. Wait, I think I got it. Hold on, guys. Dog animator. I think, no, no, no. I think that's right. I think that's right. So basically, we're going to be throwing in the direction of the dog animator, but I'm not so sure that's going to work because, like, if I'm pointing my camera this way and I hit spit, I really want it to spit that way. But we'll, we'll double check here. There we go. That's funny. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, he's gone. Um, sweet. So what we'll do is we're going to have a variable. Here it is. The dog needs to rotate. Yeah, here it is right here. Um, shoot. Ah, yes. I think I got it. I think I got it. RB. Huh. This right here, this is it right here. Got it. So the camera is always going to face, um, what is this? There it is. Mm. Sorry guys, let me let me think about this really quick. So what we need to do here, we need to calculate the flat, um, the flat, uh, or uh, what, what's the word? Lateral? Is it lateral? Uh, forward of the camera. I'm not sure what the right word is. Something like this, okay? So now we have these, these uh, directions here, direction forward and direction right. Yeah, yeah. So all we need is direction forward, and now all we got to do is type in, yeah, yeah, this right here. So direction forward times throw power. That should do it. Let's change throw power value. That's ridiculous um, that it's that fast. Okay, throwing it forward. Throw power, I think something like 40. Let's try that. Yes. Now the box collider for some reason is trigger. Huh. 
I think I got it. W yeah, we definitely need a, a power uh, or a, a cool down. What's the, what's the word, guys? Um, on collision enter. We really need a grounded value. Uh, so what we could do is we could say transform dot position uh, pl uh, plus equals dir forward, um, which that would be uh, something like a value of one. So that might do it. The reason I say that is because it's touching the player and then it's disengaging. Um, I think. Let's see here. Or it's, it's basically setting trigger back to true. Why? <sighs> I don't know why. Let's, let's double check. I'm going to do it one more time. We're going to look at its values. Let's take a look here. Okay, it fell through. So let's figure out why. There it is. Box collider is trigger is uh, false. So what's its box collider value set to? Isn't that strange, guys? For some reason, it's falling through the map. Not anymore. Huh. There it is. I don't know why it's falling through the map. I think what we need to do is we definitely need to have it at continuous or something. Uh, why are you throwing down? Okay, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Um, I feel like we should... Uh... <sighs> RB.velocity.y equals uh, throw power. We should just be adding a little bit of velocity here. So player.instance.throw power. Um, maybe divide it by three. I just feel like it should be going up a little bit. Um, why? Oh, you can't do that. That's why. Huh. Let's, let's, add, let's fix the throw power here. Let's make the throw power a little more intense. And uh, we'll see if that fixes everything. Basically, you want to be able to throw it at whatever. Um, you want and it'll hit it. There shouldn't be a question. So let's uh let's do that really quick, okay, guys. Um, throw power is set to. Uh, let's go back to one hundred. Try it out. Try it out again. Hit play. That's great. Let's try again. Throw it at a wall. How funny is this? Go 
good. Okay, so you can pretty much throw it at whatever you want. So if I wanted to throw it at these guys, all I'd have to do is aim and then there he goes. So that's the theory. I, what do you guys think? Should he spit it in the direction he's facing or the camera? I feel like the camera's better. And uh, the, the, the bone should have a uh, trail renderer on it. Let me think here. trail renderer and I'm gonna take the white pixel that I have Jebby it's okay Jeb Jeb it's okay Jeb 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 step dust is gonna be our trail renderer sorry Jeb was having a nightmare there we go and we're gonna just bring this down to pretty small size with time, good. And this isn't gonna deactivate at all. I mean, it's, if it moves, it's gonna show up. Um, so that's the theory. Let's take a look. Way too long. Uh, two, maybe one. Let's try that. I'll have it spin too. Uh, can you add really quick before we do that though? We're going to create a new material. Uh, I think what I want to do is just the material will be called white additive. It's just going to have a white pixel in the albedo fade. Let's see if we can go to sprites here. Sprites, default. How about, no, 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 no. How about, um, what am I doing? Particles, standard surface additive um, and that is right here and we're going to add it to the trail where is it there it is add it to the trail renderer and there we go maybe drop the opacity down towards the end of the trail and my friends i feel like we should be good to go the next thing though uh is we want the trail renderer to be turned off so we're going to go to our throwable script Um, and then we're going to go to it's public trail renderer. Not every throwable is going to have a trail renderer. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if get component trail renderer, if that exists, not trailer renderer, trail renderer, uh, if that exists, then we need to say trail renderer equals get component trail renderer that's about it got it then we go to if trail renderer then trail renderer dot uh is is visible no 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 uh rendering Kind of want it just to be time equals zero, maybe? Time equals one? We could try that. How do you make it so that the trail renderer doesn't turn off necessarily? It just stops rendering. Let's see if that works. Turn it on, one, and then go. Oh, I see. <laughs> He's 
gone. Oh, and it passed through. I feel like we need to make the box collider a lot bigger. Um, so uh, we need to figure this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have the trail renderer turn on when you throw it. And then basically some sort of cool off period where it sort of settles and then you Oh, the bulls call emitting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Emitting equals false. And then emitting equals true. There we go. Thank you so much, Niter. And also Adrian. Okay, guys. So we got a couple problems here that we need to work with using this bone. Uh, plenty of things to, to fix. There we go. Oh, fun. So the moment it goes in your mouth, you just turn it off. understand what to do uh, yeah about this rotation y'all let's let's go ahead and get some spit sounds um. <laughs> um, sorry I'm just thinking about all the fun sound effects we can do uh, shoot game I kind of like this. Let's do that one. And then s combine it with a spit sound. Tracks, stereo. And then do a spit sound. That's good right there. That was it. Pull it down. And then a whoosh. Whoosh. Part of me wants the item that you throw to just blow up immediately after spitting it. Um, so we'll see if that's something we can consider. Not my favorite. We're gonna need to mix it with some other stuff, I know. But uh, let's see here. Go to our player here. We'll try it out though and see. I kind of like that. And then what we'll do is we're going to have a couple things. I think this, the round circle particles, we can emit that, those. 
The star particles, we can em emit those. The eat particles, we can emit those. The uh, jump particles, we can emit those. There's a lot of things we can emit here uh, to, to just quickly create a cool effect. Um, so honestly, we could go player uh, player.instance dot eat particles dot emit five the circle ones in particular uh, let's type circle yep emit those the star particles do I have those yeah emit those um, and then the uh, jump particles as well I see I see no reason why not um, let's try that the jump particles so we're gonna emit a bunch of particles when you spit it out to make it look like there's this big effect. Uh, it'd be really funny if you click and hold and you inflate and then it goes poof and it shoots it out. Like uh, it correlates with the size of the player. Fun. Okay. Um, that's the shooting sound is not enough. So what I'm gonna do is we need like a gunshot, right? I like that. So we'll we'll mix it with that. Um, yep. There we go. Put it there. And then tracks. So what you can do, this is the theory. What you can do is you can mix all this together. And then mix. Have this one at the start, so it's a spit start. See? Trick, uh, tracks, mix and render. Ugh, we'll just make a mo mo mono. And we need a hit sound for when it actually, like if it's being fired and then it hits something, we need a big smash, smack sound. Not a sound specifically uh, associated with the material, but just a big smack sound. Um, that'll be really fun. So dog spit. There it is. Save it. Yes. Click. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Uh, let's just, is this right? Let's double check. Let's try that. <laughs> that's good and i want it to rotate and spin right so you can change its angular vo velocity to be just completely random uh so rb dot angular velocity equals random dot range vector three dot zero to actually um Hmm. How do you do a random angular velocity? I'm trying to think here. New vector three, random dot range negative 
It's gonna be a long qu equation, but I think it's gonna be okay. Yeah, I think that'll do, right? Is that okay? <laughs> I think that's fine. Uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, let's see if that, that looks good though. Oh, I mean, my goodness, if, the bo if, if, if it could boomerang? Oh no, that's a great idea. That would be so funny. Let's consider it. I think, honestly, it doesn't need to be random. It should just be... Um, uh, transform dot... Left? Times player dot instance. Is that... Is that Huh. Oh, right. <laughs> you can be right, maybe. Uh, player instance dot throw power. Good. So let's take a look here. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I see. Man, it might need to be transform dot up. That sucks. And then <clears throat> multiply it times like uh, times 50. So it's like spinning like crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, the problem with it coming back to you is it makes things really easy. Uh, so, why why is this not working? Re um, let's see here. I'm gonna do this new vector uh, vector three. Uh, we're gonna do just intense numbers two fifty two fifty. I I just want it to look wild when you throw it so that it looks kind of spherical, so that it looks like it's more of a projectile. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I need to be a little bit faster. <gasps> Look at that. That's so funny. I need to have like a uh, particles coming out of his face, like lines to indicate you really shot it. Um, but let's make it super fast. 450 by 450 by 450. And, ah yes, we need to say transform <coughs> dot position plus equals direction forward times two. So that it doesn't interact with your face at all. All right, and then after this, we need to have, I, I'd, I'd like to get that hit sound. Good. Okay, guys, um, and also that trail renderer could probably be a little bit bigger. See? Yeah. Kidoki. So that's great. Now let's get a collection sound. Okay. Item get game. Coin collect. I like that. It's kind of cool. And then we'll also have some teeth sounds. Chomp. OK. 
Can I do it myself? That kind of hurts. Here we go. I think that might be it. So we can basically have two of them. That really hurts my teeth. Uh, tracks, mix and render to mono. No, I don't like that. Any of that, I don't like any of it. Um, col item collect. It's gotta be some sort of like sound, like a sound, right? Ooh, I like that. Well, that's fun. Let's take a look. <gasps> wow, let's take a look here. Those are such fun sounds. They remind me of Wind Waker. Oh my word. These are great. Anyway, this one's great. So we're gonna do like a crunch sound maybe, because it's gonna be sticks and branches and stuff like that. Let me show you something really cool though. That was great. I think we can do that. I'm thinking, what, what are we gonna be grabbing? Um, it's mostly long things. So anything like a stick or a bone. So I feel like we could probably get away with having just a crunch sound like that for everything. Fade out. I'm having too much fun. I hope I'm not, I don't have anything else to do today. This is too fun. By the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, be sure to check that out. It's my treat to you. You can use it however you want. Item collect or um, throwable grab. You can use it however you want. You can use it to make a game for a million bucks. I really don't care. Um, let's turn this down. So be sure to check that out below. If 2D is not your thing, if you're more into 3D games, check out below my free 3D course. Totally free, no gimmicks. Um, and you can learn how to, there it is. Uh, learn how to make 3D games with no knowledge of modeling. Um, so be sure to check those out below. You guys can go at your own pace. You can download the stuff and put it in a folder somewhere on your computer. I really don't care. I just want to see you succeed. Okay, so that collect sound, never underestimate the value of grabbing, uh, of, of, putting, <laughs> of putting sounds in games. Sound is everything. So this is the pickup sound. Let's hit play and take a look. Okay, we need to make it louder. <laughs> I forgot how funny that is. Um, so that sound isn't loud at all. Really frustrating, actually. So let's take a look and see why that is. Let's set it to two. I don't know why. I think it's because it's um, he's a 3D sound and not a 2D sound. I might need to tweak a lot of this stuff, but... The next thing is, that's great. Hey, I just figured it out. Missile. That's what we need. Missile sound. Missile. Whistle. What? What?
What? There it is. Oh, it'd be fun if you could collect bo like bombs and stuff, or like um, a grenade. <laughs> that would be really funny. Let's see here. Okay, that's our sh our uh, spit sound, and then you just sort of th mix it with this here. That's great. And not too long. Um, change the pitch. Fade it in. I think that's kind of fun. Let's take a look. Dog spit missile. See how that sounds. Take a look, Harry. Um, put that in here and take a look. <laughs> it feels great. I love it. Let's try it one more time. And when the item hits something, we need that smack sound that you get really, uh, it's in games like a uh, wind waker. <laughs> All right, guys. Next, we're gonna do that smack sound. So it's gonna be a video game smack. Uh, or punch. I love those sounds, man. Game punch. You're horrible, you're horrible. Anime, I'm gonna type in anime. Kind of like that. I think we need a smack sound as well. Uh, so I'm going to go to freesound.org. Freesound.org. Smack. Okay, this should be fine. Um, maybe mix it with a balloon pop. Do 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 do. Yep, there it is. What I tell you guys, you need to listen to me more. Stop it. That's a that's such a good sound. So we're gonna take that one. It's really hard to get a good balloon pop sound, uh, but that's one of them for sure. So here's the mix. We could probably bring in some of the graphic EQ here increase the treble on that one sound we downloaded prior to the balloon pop, the, the punch sound, because I feel like we could get a lot more here. Yeah. So really get that up. There we go. Tracks. 
mix render. So that's the throwable object hitting something. So the smack is when you hit an enemy. Um, but I don't think I want that sound when it just hits a wall. So let's do this. Uh, throwable object, hit enemy, or hit breakable. But go back in time and just take this. And shorten it. Maybe something like this. Almost. Cut. If we shorten it a little bit, increase the pitch, it can be a generic hit sound. Um, Okay, that's that's good enough for me. Export as wave, uh, throwable object. Whoops, throwable object, and just generic hit. Okay, click OK, and now uh, we need to go to the script here. Go to throwable, and we're gonna go to. If collision game object equals player it's this object, and then also another one here is um, if you know our velocity, our rigidbody.velocity.magnitude is greater than five, then picked up equals false. But we also need to say and picked up equals true. Hold on one sec here. Let's have a thrown variable. Okay. So something like thrown equals true. That way, it's a pretty strict Boolean. Thrown equals false. If thrown equals true, and our rigid body velocity is pretty high, bigger than five at least, then thrown equals false. But we're also gonna do some cool hit effects. So for example, obviously that sound, which is gonna be player instance dot uh, throw hit sound. Um, we're gonna play that. Let's make sure we go to player here and add that. Throw hit sound. And then we're also gonna have a throw hit breakable sound, okay? And that's going to occur if the object that is hit at that magnitude is an enemy. Currently, we don't have any enemies, so we're not going to do that. Very good. Let's try it out. Player controller. Throw hit sound, throw throwable. Okay, so there's throwable hit, and then there's throwable hit breakable. That should do it, and then if that works, then what we can also do is create a particle emission uh, for the object that is being hit. Nice, that feels pretty good actually. Sweet. So it's a little too loud, so we can go to here and set it to 1.4. Um, we're also going to want to instantiate uh, hit particles, transform dot position. Uh, Cadernian identity. There we go. And the hit particles for now are just going to be, I don't know, something like the jump particles. Okay. So let's go to particle bull, uh, public particle system. 
um, hit particles. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so all we gotta do is go to, let's see here, where all of our prefabs are. We have other here. So all I gotta, oh, particles, we have particles here. So we have the jump particles. I'm just gonna take and put that there. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is copy, paste, and it's just gonna be particles, generic, poof. And we're gonna create a prefab out of it. There we go. Put it in here. We're gonna take a look at it really quick. So this is our generic poof. Uh, set it at 25, there it is. Just like that. If we had it like this, we definitely want it to be just a sphere. Boom. Okay. And I'm curious if we even need gravity modifier. Yeah, we do. Just a little bit. Okay. So there's our generic poof. Uh, we're going to set it to emit once, no looping. So hit play. Boom. There it is. But we're also going to create a script called destroy me. Uh, I don't think I have one currently, so let me show you guys really quick how easy this script is. So there's this script called destroy me. Make sure we open that up and re uh, fix the capital M. And so what you're going to do with destroy me is you're just going to have a float that's public. Float wait to destroy. It's going to be set to zero. And then on start, you just simply say destroy game object and then wait to destroy. Now, all we gotta do is just drag that onto the particle poof, and that will be destroyed after about a second. I'm, I'm curious if the particle system that Unity offers has something already built in. I've never seen it, uh, like destroy after playing or something. Um, but I'm just gonna put this here, and we're gonna wait uh, two seconds. That way, it's not always on screen. Okay, so now what we do is we click on this and we just go to our particles. Generic particle poof. There it is. And the theory is, well, the theory is that this should work. Um, so let's hit play. It works. I love my life and I love my wife. Let's see here. Save it out. Try again. I just want to make sure. The whistle is causing problems. It's cool, but it doesn't work. Is it this one? that one can be just swapped out in the player controller there it is so we're just gonna do a regular spit but also a, a, a flipping sound right so boomerang boomerang um, don't need that there we go let's type in boomerang let's see what we get Boomerang! There we go. Yep. So let's let's try that. Uh, it doesn't need to be. Yes, it needs to be loopable, and we're gonna have it on the object itself. It's gonna play, and it's gonna be a three D sound, uh, and it's going to. It once it touches the ground, it's gonna stop playing. Basically, okay. This shouldn't be that hard. I like that. So something like this. Guys, how do you, actually I'm gonna put this one in the front.
Good. So it doesn't really need to be loopable. It just needs to be long and then it'll just fade out. Okay, that's all we gotta do. Fade out. Export. Throwable. Object. Fly or boomerang. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our object here, our throwable. We're gonna create a new public audio source. Um, inside the audio source, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's really gonna be called the boomerang audio source. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna say boomerang audio source dot play. The moment you throw it, and then you're gonna stop it when you hit something, okay? That's about it. But you wanna make sure that the e, um, it's uh, set to 3D, right? So there's our audio source. No, 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 here it is. Um, let's add an audio source to our throwable object. Drag that in there, and then it's gonna have that boomerang sound. Um, and the volume, not gonna worry about that. Loop, no. Plan awake, no. Spatial blend, 3D, yes. Show gizmos, and then let's take a look here. So we want it to be pretty easy to hear something. So 10 by 100. Honestly, 2D, it really could be just 2D. Yeah, Let, let's try that out. That didn't work. What? Huh? Why? Boomerang audio source dot play, boomerang audio source dot stop. What? Oh. Let's see here. It needs to be on the throw. Like that, right? Let's take a look. By the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, be sure to check that out. My treat to you. You can use it however you want. Enjoy my day. What a great day. I don't get it. I'm not hearing it. Boy, I tell you what, that is fun. That is fun. For some reason, it's not playing. Uh... So, or I can't hear it, maybe? Um, export. Boomerang? Where are you? There it is. So, uh, I think it's just the volume is super quiet. So, let's take a look here. Man, this is gonna be fun though, when we get a little punch effect. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a sec, guys. There we go. And now with the, where is it? Throwable. Um, that's too loud but now. So, but this could be like a thousand, um, by 1,000, by 1,000, right? Um, ah, too loud. That's what I was like, what am, what am I doing? There we go. One more time, and we should be good to go with the boomerang sound. 
So by the way, guys, for those of you who are curious, what we're working on right now is game feel. That's what that's what this is all called. It's getting everything to feel amazing. Um, most game mechanics are pretty drab, I think, in a lot of these classic games. Um, classic like uh, Nintendo 64, GameCube platformers. Why? Well, there goes Unity. Shoot. Mini Tom official says, where's father? Um, we're taking a break. We needed a break. Because father is dark and intense and it's a lot. So I, I think that it's okay to take a break sometimes. Okay, guys, uh, we're close to getting this uh, this feeling good. Um, so, I don't know why it's not spinning. Does anybody know how to get it to the angular vo velocity to go like insane? Is it the angular angular drag that's the problem? If anybody knows the answer, I would love to know how to get it spinning fast. I want it to be like, like really fast. And right now, I mean, we, you could see here, we've tried to set it and it's just not doing it. So I don't really know what I'm doing wrong here. I mean, if, even if you set it to 5,000, it's still not gonna ha have a fast spin. Um, Yeah, I don't know, man. Probably angular drag. No, I don't. I don't. Maybe it is. No. Velocity torque, huh? How do you do that? Velocity torque. Rigid body. Velocity torque. Let's take a look here. Rigid body to add torque. Okay, okay, we'll try that. 350, 350, 350. Uh, new vector three. We can try that. Okie dokie, I am live. I think the default angular velocity is something like seven, so increasing that should do the trick. Oh, the max angular velocity, huh? Oh, is it really? Is that really what it is? Max angular velocity. Okay. You might be right there. Okay. RB dot max. Angular velocity equals 10 million. Okay. How about just 1,000? How's that? Let's try that. So close. Uh, I want it to be sort of floating and spinning though, so we're going to need to do that as well. Yeah! That feels great! Oh my goodness gracious me. So that feels awesome. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure the rigid body by default is kinematic. Uh, that also means that the rotator, 
uh, rotate object script, which doesn't appear to exist. We want to add that. There it is, rotator. Add that to the object by default. Okay. Uh, which means that then when you throw it, uh, the rotator. We could type it in here, public rotator. There it is, rotator. What? Tatus, precious. Okay, rotator dot enabled equals force. After you throw it, then it can lay around and stuff, but when, I want it to first float and stay put, right? Rotator, very nice, Harry. Hit play. There it is. <laughs> no? Okay, that's not it. Um, there we go. Rotator enabled equals false. We also need to figure out why the rotation is doing what it is. I think the rotation should be uh, whatever the rotation is. <sighs> Transform dot forward. Is that is that even? No, you can't do that. I don't know what's going on. To be completely honest, uh, it needs to be a local rotation. That's the problem. Um, local rotation. Then after that, I think we're good. The rot the rotator here is weird though. So it needs to rotate along the Z, no, the Y axis. So what's the problem? Why is it rotating like that? I feel like we should just set this to 20 and be done with it. Oh. Why? Okay, so the rotation is, it really should be the ridge rotation, uh, which is, um, it should be zero. Uh, let's take a look, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look. So if I run to grab the bone, let's take a look and see. Where's my player? Bloody mouth. Okay. It should be actually. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. Zero? Why? <gasps> oh, negative 90. That is so fun. Oh, man. Alrighty. Sweet. Okay, so we've got this throwable, we're gonna call it throwable bone. And we're gonna put it in our prefabs folder. Uh, Alright, the next thing is sticks. 
I'll show you guys what the plan is here. Um, so we have throwable bones. Whoa! <laughs> That's not good. Um, crap. That's not good. So... <laughs> I think it might be that rotation. It just hits things. So let's see here. Um, max angular velocity, we could do 250 maybe. The next thing I wanted to do though, is I wanted to get a tree branch with two leaves on the side, and then you can use it as a fan to fly. Um, but first you gotta figure out uh, what the gravity is. That's weird. That's really fun though. Really, really fun. Sweet, okay. Uh, the next thing I wanna do here is, I might model it, no. I'm gonna wait for Felipe. Um, Yeah, here's what we'll do though. We have this throwable bone here. This one is gonna be called, this is gonna be a propeller, okay? Um, so we're gonna call this throwable propeller, okay? And in the throwable script, all you gotta do is say public bull is propeller. Is that how you spell propeller? I don't think so. <laughs> How do you spell propeller? Uh, propeller. Yeah. P R O P E L L L E R. By default, it's going to be false. But we say, you know what? If is propeller. The system's gravity, okay, change unity physics gravity, shoot, for one object. Now, I believe they're going to tell me to do drag. You add force. Oh, interesting. You add force up. Okay, so if it's picked up, um, you, what you're gonna do is player.instance.rb. Add force. Um, what is that? Why? RB.mass. This means 2G for that rigid body. Moreover, if you now. Oh, we're adding it upwards, maybe? Maybe down? We'll, we'll see. So if um, is propeller, then add that force, right? That's about it. Uh, and player.instance dot is jumping. Is it just jumping? Yeah. Yeah, jumping. Uh, that doesn't really work though. It really should be is grounded, uh, is set to false, is really what it should be. If that's the case, then um, we're gonna add force, we'll see, to the, to the player. Um, and then player instance dot RB right here. There we go. We'll see, uh, RB dot mass. And now what this means is, yeah, that really is it. So if you pick up an object and it is a propeller, uh, then what you're gonna do is you're going to add force to the player when they're jumping. Um, and hopefully we'll get that cool um, sort of 
what's the word like a sail so this right here is a propeller it's a throwable propeller so let's just drag it into our prefabs it's a variant and we'll add particle effects and all that to it so there's our propeller okay so I'm much heavier now so it works it's just working in the opposite cool this is gonna be so fun you guys are gonna be well you're gonna be blown away negative all this so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> we'll see if that works all righty guys Oh no! Whoa! <laughs> okay, so uh, we don't need to multiply times the player's mass. We just want to add in the physics gravity. Um, I would say divided by two. That's basically all we want to do. I think that's it, guys. So it just cuts your your movement in half, essentially. Uh, but you could, you know, what's funny is you could spit it out while you're flying. It's, it's nothing that we would want to, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't understand. Um, that doesn't work. And I feel like it should be, uh, I feel like it should be time scale. Uh, so add force. Honestly, we could just choose a force value, couldn't we? Like time scale. <sighs> time dot time scale. Uh, time dot delta time times uh, propeller. Oh, you know what? Instead of is propeller, we would just do. Um, spin propeller force and it would be a value of like two i mean really it should be like 25. Uh, well it should be value of zero um, by default and then you can just add it and change it based on you know your uh if spin propeller force does not equal zero then don't worry about it otherwise add that force yep and that should do it why What? It needs to be vector three, huh? Okay. New vector three dot zero. Uh, it's not new, it's just vector three dot zero. And if spin propeller force does not equal vector three dot zero, then go ahead and do it. So the next question is, uh, you know, if you had a Thing in your in your mouth like a rocket and it was blowing that way technically you could have it go left uh, why ah, there we go all right let's take a look guys so the propeller force by default is zero so we're gonna have it uh, be a value of well it's not gonna be negative add force up it'll be positive of 25 let's try it guys It works. So we set it to 100. Whoa! <laughs> okay, something happened there. Uh, let's. It's 100 currently. I love it. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, let's set it to 200, and call it a day. Okay. 200. Um, select, make sure it's select. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll set it to override. And we'll make it like a plant um, or something. But what would, you know, what's funny is what's going to make this really fun is instead of having the trail renderer um, 
Uh, you would have instead of having it on the object itself, you would have it in separate objects on the left and right side. So one over here, right? Copy component, paste component as new, and then not so big, and then one on the other side as well. And uh, I don't mind those. Those will be available at all times. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else? I think that's fine. Let's take a look. And it's going to spin, and you're going to see it while it's spinning. Yeah, like this. Look how fun that is. Whee! Oh, my word. My daughter's going to love this game. <laughs> it's one of the funnest things I've ever played. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, something happened. Uh, what? So there's a couple things that happen there that are a little strange. I'm not so sure what they are. Um, but I think I, what I really want is the alpha to be lower. Not so intense. <sighs> and let's try and figure out what's going on here. That is so fun. Obviously, the spin force is ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that intense. It's causing some serious problems, despite the fact that I think it's hilarious. I think it'd be something like 50, right? Because uh, that's just ridiculous. But wow, is that not fun, guys? I love that. And I think there should be a sound that plays, like a The propeller sound, you could probably grab that. Uh, go to the downloads folder here. There it is. Open that up in uh, Audacity and then lower it and just have it loop. So I'll show you something like pitch or speed. Yeah, speed is fine. Change the speed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Click OK. And also, by the way, if you guys ever want to create a loop, what you do is you create a new track, mono track, and you fade out one bit here, and then you paste the front, but then you reverse it, and then fade it in. And then make it perfectly on the edge here. Son of a, that should do. Yep. So that's gonna be perfect, mix and render. Export as a wave, and then all we're gonna call this is um, propeller or slow propeller. This is too fun. I mean, this is going to be an aspect of the game I'm just going to love. So what you do with this is basically you're going to have the audio source of the um, you would, we'll create another audio source. And in this, what we're going to do is we're going to say audio source. That's the boomerang audio source. And this is going to be the slow boomerang audio source. And what you're going to do is, if the player is jumping and spinning, then slow boomerang audio source dot volume equals one. Okay. Otherwise, really, it should be play. Uh, and then the otherwise, you just stop it. Okay. Um, If slow boomerang audio source dot is playing, if that's true, what, why? There we go. If it's playing, then stop, right? The same is true for all the way at the bottom here. If it's not picked up, then it shouldn't be doing anything, okay? That's about it. Um, Let's go to that audio source, make sure we drag it into the throwable script here. 
There we go. And then it's going to have that slow boomerang sound. Oh, my word. It didn't save. Why? What's going on here? Oh, boy. I hope it didn't override it. No, it didn't. Export as wave. Boomerang. Yeah, I didn't save for some reason. Throw a bomber, uh, object, boomerang. Oh, it's called slow propeller. Thomas, slow propeller. Stop. What? It's not even showing up anywhere. Export as wave. Should be right there. Save, yes. Click OK. Jump back into Unity. It should import now. Something's wrong, huh? Oh, it's right there. So for some reason, that's showing up. Uh, it's not going to play on awake. Loop is fine though. Um, and then what you do is you you just want to double check. You want to say uh, if audio source exists, right? Then do that. Otherwise. Um, you know, don't. Uh, else, if yeah, if it exists, and it's playing good. All right, let's uh, take a look here. It's slop, really? Oh, it is. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's hit play here. Take a look. Oh. So I don't hear it, but that is really fun. Boy, that's fun. It's a little too fast on that on that launch. Man, I'm telling you what, guys. That is something special. And it didn't take long to make. That's the important thing. If you can make a game fun. Um, so let's double check here. The volume. Oh. Uh, slow boomerang audio source dot play. Okay. Let's double check something here. There it is. I wonder why. Hmm. I wonder why it's not playing. Hmm. I'm not so sure what's going on here. I can't hear it. <sighs> I'm not sure what's going on here. Can't hear it. Yeah, I don't know. It was playing, but when you picked it up, it stopped, really? Maybe it's those things. It could be, we'll see. I'm telling to play every frame. I see, okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. And is playing is set to false. Thank you, thank you. Very good, very good. Thank you guys so much. Um, that should do it. It's playing. That is just too fun. Uh oh. Unassigned reference exception. If it exists. Okay. So, um, 
We'll just make it a little bit louder. And why not have a little whining dog sound? Uh, dog growl, dog growl, like he's holding on to it. We'll have it like two times as long. We are almost done. Increase that pitch. One more growl. Puppy growl. Hmm? <laughs> that's, that's a dog pulling at a rope is what that is, which is exactly what we need. Um, I don't know. I think maybe just a chain. Yeah, just the, his dog collar, I think, is fine. Fade out, fade in. I think that's just fine. That's good. Okay, let's export that out. And I think that's fine. Okay, guys, what is that? Propeller. I'm just telling, spelling everything wrong today. Propeller, slow propeller. Good, fun, okay. Overall, I think we're great. just too fun um, I think he you know he goes a little too high I'm not horribly opposed to how high he goes um, so we'll see I'm surprised honestly I'm very surprised how quickly all this happened uh, it's, it's funny to me how easy it was to program all this yeah all right, guys. Well, that was really, really fun. If you guys enjoyed the live stream, be sure to leave a like, com comment, subscribe for more live streams and videos about indie game development. And guys, remember, you can download my free 2D game kit below. I made this game kit for PewDiePie to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days. So it's a really effective game kit, totally free. You can download it, just stick it on your computer, use it wherever, you, whenever you want. No gimmicks, promise. Or my 3D free 3D course. So check that out below, and I will see you guys maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important, hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up 
your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too.